Whenever you wash your hair, eat an ice cream cone, or put a disc into a CD player, you're using chemical compounds. There are millions of different examples of chemical compounds. Most things we see, touch, wear, and eat are made up of compounds. What exactly are chemical compounds? How are they formed? What are some of the different types of chemical compounds? How are chemical compounds grouped? And how are they useful to us? During the next few minutes, we're going to explore these questions and others as we investigate the fascinating world of chemical compounds. When you look at the water in a lake, or admire a waterfall, have you ever wondered what water is made of? Everything you see, whether it's a non-living thing, such as rocks or water, or living things, such as these ducks, all are made up of millions of particles that cannot be seen with the human eye. The smallest particle of a pure substance is an atom. When you have a pure substance made up of only one type of atom, we call this an element. There are over 100 elements on Earth. Aluminum in this can is an element, as is iron found in this hot metal. Oxygen in the air we breathe is also an element. Neon gas in this sign is made up of neon atoms that when magnified millions of times look something like this. And the iron atom found in this nail looks something like this when magnified millions of times. In nature, atoms are not usually found in their pure isolated form, but instead are commonly found attached to other atoms. A chemical compound is a substance made up of the combined atoms of two or more elements. When two atoms of hydrogen combine with an atom of oxygen, they form the compound known as water, or H2O. There are thousands of different compounds. Scientists have developed different ways to describe and group compounds. Let's take a look at some of the ways this is done. You compare. What do orange juice and vinegar have in common? If you said that they're both acids, then you're correct. Acids are substances that produce hydrogen ions in a solution. When acids are dissolved in water, some of the hydrogen ions, symbolized by H+, are released. It's the tendency to produce H plus ions that gives acids their characteristic properties. Acidic foods such as lemons, limes, and grapefruit tend to have a sour taste. Even though acids tend to have a sour taste, you should never taste an unknown substance to test for the presence of acids. Many acids also tend to be corrosive, meaning they eat away at materials they come in contact with as shown here. Many acids also tend to conduct electricity. Strong acids are good electrolytes. An electrolyte is a substance that separates into ions in a water solution. Electrolytes are also capable of conducting an electric current. One of the most widely used chemicals in the world is sulfuric acid. It's used in a wide range of products from car batteries to paints. Other common acids used in manufacturing include phosphoric acid, hydrochloric acid, and nitric acid. In your kitchen, you probably can find soap as well as ammonia. These are examples of bases. A base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions in a solution. Hydroxide ions are symbolized OH negative. Bases in solution 
often feel slippery, like liquid soap. Like acids, strong bases can be corrosive, and contact with skin may cause burns. Basic solutions are also electrolytes and are able to conduct electricity. Liquid ammonia is a common base and is used as a household cleaner. Magnesium hydroxide is a base commonly used as a stomach antacid. Another base, calcium hydroxide, sometimes called caustic lime, is used in the production of mortar, used by masons. It's also a common ingredient in drain cleaners. Why is it safe to eat some acids, such as oranges, but it's not safe to swallow this solution of sulfuric acid? The answer lies in the fact that all acids are not alike. The same holds true for bases. The strength of an acid or base depends on how well or completely a compound forms ions when dissolved in water. For example, an acid that ionizes almost completely in solution is a strong acid, and one that does not ionize much is a weak acid. Concentration, on the other hand, refers to the amount of acid or base dissolved in a solution. The terms dilute and concentrated refer to the concentration of a solution. This person is testing the pH of pool water. pH is a measure of the concentration of hydronium ions in a solution. In other words, it's a measure of the acidity of a solution. The pH scale uses a series of numbers from 0 to 14. You decide. What does 7 on the pH scale represent? Seven is in the middle of the scale and represents the neutral point. A neutral solution has a pH of seven and is neither an acid nor a base. Distilled water has a pH of seven and is neutral. Solutions such as vinegar with a pH of less than seven are acids. And solutions such as hand soap with a pH of greater than seven are bases. One simple way to test the pH of a substance is with pH paper, which undergoes a color change. First, the pH paper is dipped into a solution. The final color of the paper is then matched with the colors in a chart to identify the pH level. You observe. What's the pH of this pickle juice? As you can see, the color on the pH paper when dipped in pickle juice most closely matches this color on the scale, which has a pH of 3. You predict. What's formed when you mix this acid with this base? When they're mixed, a salt is formed. A salt is a neutral compound formed from the negative ion of an acid and a positive ion from a base. This type of reaction is called a neutralization reaction. In the process of neutralization, the properties of the acid and the base are lost. In turn, neutral substances, salt and water, are formed. An example of a neutralization reaction occurs when you take an antacid tablet to relieve an upset stomach. When your stomach produces more acid than needed, this often causes discomfort. The antacid tablet is a base, which reacts with stomach acid and produces salt and water. The reaction raises the pH level to the normal value and may ease the discomfort. Every time you ride in a car, write with a pencil 
and put on your sneakers, you're using some type of carbon compound. You decide. What is carbon? Carbon is an element that is quite common and is found in all living things, including both plants and animals. Carbon is found here in the periodic table. Compounds containing carbon are often referred to as organic compounds. Organic compounds are based on the element carbon. Non-living things also may be made up of organic compounds, as is the graphite in this pencil tip. It's estimated that over 90% of all compounds are organic compounds. A great deal of chemical research focuses on the development and manufacturing of organic compounds, resulting in products such as these. The ability of carbon to bond with other elements explains why there are millions of carbon compounds. One of the simplest organic compounds involves two carbon atoms, and the most complex may involve thousands of carbon atoms. Carbon compounds can form long straight chains or branched chains, single rings or rings linked together. It's the multiple ways carbon atoms bond with each other and other elements that result in millions of different kinds of organic compounds. You predict What will happen when we bring a match toward the gas coming out of this nozzle? As you can see, it ignites. The gas is a type of compound called propane. Gases such as butane, propane, and octane belong to a group of organic compounds called hydrocarbons. They play a vital role in heating our homes and even provide heat for hot air balloons. What exactly is a hydrocarbon? A hydrocarbon is an organic compound that contains only hydrogen and carbon atoms. Propane, shown here, has three carbon atoms and eight hydrogen atoms. In propane, the carbon atoms are joined by single covalent bonds. Compounds such as propane and methane are called saturated hydrocarbons and form relatively short chains. In unsaturated hydrocarbons, one or more of the bonds between carbon atoms is a double covalent or triple covalent bond. Unsaturated hydrocarbons often form large chains. Hydrocarbons, as well as organic compounds such as alcohol, esters, and organic acids, all play a very important role in creating products we use every day. During the past few minutes, we've explored some of the fascinating characteristics of compounds in chemistry. We discussed how living and non-living things are made up of compounds and we saw the general way in which compounds are formed from the bonding together of atoms of two or more elements. One way of grouping compounds is by classifying them as acids or bases. Acids are substances that produce hydrogen ions in a solution. Acids have a pH of less than seven, and acids tend to have a sour taste and may corrode substances. Bases produce hydroxide ions in solution. Bases have a pH of greater than seven and often have a slippery feel to them. We also differentiated between strength and concentration of acids and bases. The strength of an acid or base is dependent on how well a compound forms ions when dissolved. Whereas concentration refers to the amount of acid or base dissolved in solution. We also reviewed some of the characteristics of salts. We explored many of the fascinating features of carbon compounds, often called organic compounds.
More specifically, we discussed some of the features of hydrocarbons, an economically valuable group of organic compounds. So the next time you eat an orange, write with a pencil, or put on your sneakers, think about some of the dozens of chemical compounds we use every day. You just might think about your world a little differently. Fill in the correct word to complete the sentence. Good luck, and let's get started. Number one. The smallest part of a pure substance is an Number two, water is an example of a chemical. Number three, orange juice is an. Number four, soap is an example of a. Number five, seven on the pH scale represents the point. Six. Bases have a pH, then seven. Number seven. The strength of an acid or base depends on how completely it forms. Number eight, organic compounds are based on the element. Number nine, propane is an example of a. And number 10, hydrocarbons contain carbon and atoms.